Welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top podcast, where it's all about learning from the best minds in the sport so you can train smarter, stay healthy, and run faster now. And now your host, Tina Muir. Hello, this is Tina Muir, and I would like to welcome you to another episode of the Runners Connect Run to the Top podcast. We know you love science. We know you love diving deep into topics within the running world where other podcasts and running blogs just won't go. We even know most of you are very sceptical of the big companies. That's why today we thought we'd go a slightly different route and I thought it would be good to talk to a professor who completed a research study on a pair of shoes that can actually increase your running economy and make you faster. No, this podcast has not been sponsored by anyone, nor was anyone paid to complete the study. This is just a really interesting review that was completed on a new type of shoe not made by any of the big companies. If you love hearing about new technologies and advances within the running world, you are going to love this. My guest today is Ken Rees. Ken is an instructor and researcher in the School of Health Sciences at the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. He is the Assistant Adjunct Professor, Faculty of Rehabilitation Medicine at the University of Alberta. He also has a PhD in Rehabilitation Medicine. He coaches Masters athletes in endurance training and has PRs of 257 in the marathon and 1014 as an Ironman. Today, Ken and I are going to talk about what Ken learned about in his kidney and heart transplant patients in his studies and how you can relate that to running. And most of all, we're going to focus on how losing his suitcase on the way to the Boston Marathon led to this discovery of a new shoe, which he tested in his lab and found shocking results. Are you ready to learn about a revolutionary product? I think you are. Let's meet Ken. Welcome to the Run to the Top podcast, Ken. Well, thank you very much. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say as uh, we love learning about the science and evidence behind our sport. So I'm sure we're going to get a lot out of this today. So do you want to just start by telling us a bit about your uh, background? Uh, I've kind of mentioned a few things in the intro, but if you could just tell us about your running background. Oh, sure. Uh, I started running probably a little later than most people, probably just uh, in my first couple of years of university in the uh, early 90s. Um, and just uh, after that, started getting into triathlon and, and, and uh, other kind of endurance sports. Uh, and I've just been keeping at it for the last, uh, gosh, must be over 20 years now. <laughs> Great. And what was it about uh, running or endurance sports in general that you, you know, interested you? Was there something in particular that you found uh, fascinating? Uh, I, I think what I like most about the endurance sports, uh, I guess what kind of got me hooked and coming back to them was um, when you, it seems like in the beginning, when you just start getting into it, you see these these huge improvements right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that's pretty motivating to keep going. And then as you get uh, faster and faster or improve more and more, the, 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 the outcomes become a, a little smaller, the, the improvements become a little smaller, the times become just a little bit better. And, uh, and then I found that even more motivating as well, just trying to see if I could knock off a, a few more seconds here rather than a few more minutes here. So it became kind of addictive, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that's something uh, that's a common misconception with uh, beginners is, you know, they have these huge jumps at the start. And, you know, you'll see, you'll see, like you said, like 10, 15 minute jumps. And then, you know, the fur- the further you get um, with the event, the smaller the percentage change and the harder it gets to become better. And I, like you say, I think we become addicted and sometimes we even become a bit distorted if we do have that kind of spike in performance and then suddenly you level off and it can be a difficult time, but that's good. It, you know, didn't stop you in that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's, it's funny the things we find motivating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess um, you probably see both sides of it from, you know, the enjoyment, like simplicity standpoint of, like you said, just running for a challenge, running uh, to reach a goal and kind of the mechanical science aspect. Have you kind of found they come together or do they kind of conflict? Uh, no, they they absolutely come together. I, I think uh, you know just just applying the you know what what I've 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 read in in uh, peer reviewed articles and kind of applying it to my own training and and seeing if it works. You know, and certainly some things work and some things don't work. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hit and miss. And and know that I, I certainly appreciate how the two sort of blend together, especially in my personal training. Do you find that it can be difficult to detach the science aspect sometimes when you want to you know just run by feel or are you you know like 
you, you hear about you know the Garmin obsession or do you, other you know sciencey looking at numbers. Do you, do you find that difficult to detach, or are you pretty good at it? Uh, I, I'm actually pretty good at detaching. It's kind of a maybe a, a, a two way street. In, in uh, I'm certainly addicted to to logging uh, my activities, and uh, you know if if for some reason I haven't charged my Garmin or whatever, it's like I have to decide whether I'm going to run or not. But uh, <laughs> when I when I do you know go out for a run, I, I don't focus too much on uh, on the pace or what the Garmin's telling me. I I uh, focus probably more on how I feel and then after go back and have a look at it and see how, how I felt uh, related to the actual performance that I was, I, was, I was doing while I was out for my run. Okay, that's a good, good uh, balance to have there. So um, you have a PhD in rehabilitation medicine. Uh, did that teach you, what did that teach you about running or uh, about being a runner? Uh, you know, I, I think I did my, uh, my undergrad and my master's in physical education, which was a little more, uh, related to, um, well, for lack of a better term, healthy populations. Uh, and <laughs> I'll, I'll get into that a little deeper, but, and, and then when I moved on to my PhD, uh, I did that working with, uh, transplant recipients. Now I had the, uh, fortune of being involved with, uh, some, uh, well, several different types of transplants. Um, with regards to, we, we hosted our national transplant games in, in Edmonton, the city where I live and work. Uh, and so we, uh, we had a lot of people volunteer, a lot of different types of transplants volunteer to be fitness tested. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I had the opportunity of working with uh, Mark Haykowski with his heart transplant recipients. And my own research was in kidney transplant recipients. So from my undergrad and, and master's um, working with healthy populations, then moving to this population where I guess getting back to the, um, you know, my initial comments about my own training um, and these people seeing huge improvements um, uh, in in their fitness levels uh, post transplant, getting you know into better shape, they see these great improvements. It's it was uh, it was certainly nice from from my point of view, and, and certainly a good population to work with. Yeah, and when you said about uh, the transplant games, can you just uh, expand on that just a little bit more? I mean, I know a very small amount about it, but maybe some of our listeners may not even know what that is. Oh, sure. Uh, I, 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 well, I, for, for, yeah, pardon me, certainly the, the United States has their national transplant games as well. Uh, basically what it is, is anyone who has any kind of, who has had any type of uh organ transplantation and even um, the bone marrow transplantations as well uh, qualify to take part in um, basically an Olympic uh, Olympics kind of event. You get people from all over the country uh, competing. Much of it's uh, participatory, um, you know, just getting people together uh, uh, in different events. Some are very competitive. There's uh, cycling, 10K races, uh, track, all the track events, uh, all the field events. And also, uh, you know, bowling um, uh, and other, other kind of more recreational activities. And I believe the goal, uh, I certainly don't mean to speak on the part of the transplants, but it's certainly to raise awareness for organ transplantation and encourage people to uh, let their family members know that they would like to be an organ donor should anything you know, tragic happen to them. Oh, okay. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this, but would you say that people who have been through uh, some kind of transplant, they kind of get that reality check of, um, you know, what, that how close they were to like, you know, not being here anymore and that they want to take better care of their health. They want to get in shape and exercise more or do you not really, you know, look into that after the research? Uh, That's a really good question. Uh, Looking at, um, and I guess I have maybe two statements on that. One would be, uh, you know, the people I see uh, in in our research projects tend to be uh, fairly health conscious, motivated individuals. So we certainly get uh, a subject bias, or, or you know, we we probably don't see the people who have no interest in improving their health. They they no one is coerced into taking part in one of our studies. So we kind of get a, a, a maybe a a different picture of of what transplant individuals are like. Hmm. Um, but certainly the ones I see. Uh, are very motivated to get into better shape. Uh, and yeah, I, you know, and, and that being said, uh, certainly I think people when they, uh, it, it's not on very, oh, how can I say this? It's not very frequent that someone uh, is, in, uh, is in an immediate need of an organ. Generally, they go through a, a phase where their organ begins to fail. And so it may take a course of years that they they um, become well, they, they really can't do much. So they become yeah. fairly deconditioned over the course of those years. Uh, and so 
that becomes their habit. And so to get them back into the habit of, of exercising again, um, can, can be a little bit of a, a trick, but, but certainly I, I think the majority of, of ones, certainly all the ones that I've met have been very, very motivated to, to exercise. Hmm. Interesting. And, and you mentioned that you, you know, you did some major research on the kidneys. Was there anything you found about, um, uh, I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but I, uh, you know, with uh, ibuprofen, uh, a lot of runners end up taking that and it does some serious like damage to their kidneys. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did you find anything that, uh, you know, you, you noticed about uh, people's kidneys or something that we would need to kind of watch out for a little bit more that we may not have considered? Uh, great, great question. <laughs> uh, and, and luckily, I had the, the opportunity of, of working uh, with the kidney transplant recipients. They all had, had uh, excellent kidney function, which was one of the, the prerequisites for them being in the study. But uh, yeah, certainly, you know, the, the use of ibuprofen while, while performing endurance events is, is probably not recommended. <laughs> uh, it, certainly, you know, we, I think as, as runners, most of us uh, enjoy listening to our bodies and seeing what we're feeling and to, you know, and, and go by that and use that as a a gauge of how hard hard we should be working and, yeah. and to mask that just seems kind of counterintuitive um, yeah. for, for for individuals I, I would I would think that's true and uh how about uh the heart you you did reach research that in one of your studies um did you get any takeaways from that study that you found particularly interesting that you'd like to share uh sorry in in the heat or a bit in the, uh did you do some research on on the heart or they're, they're, oh, on the heart. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, what's 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 really interesting, and and it's pretty much, um, you know, much of the uh, the transplant world. Uh, I think they're the, the the just the the common medications that are used to um, reduce the risk of rejection. The body, when you put a, a foreign object into a body, into your body, it's kind of well. If you get a sliver, you tend to get an irritation around that mm-hmm. that sliver. You have a you have um, the body fighting to get that foreign body out. And that similar things would happen with an organ transplantation. You're taking a, a foreign object and placing in the body. So uh, there are some fairly strict uh, medications and medication regimens that, that have to be followed to reduce that risk of rejection. So the body accepts the organ. And uh, those medications can um, have some, some detrimental effects. They can increase risks uh, for diabetes, increase blood pressure and the such. So common across all transplants. But the heart in particular, uh, very interesting. Um, without, I, hope, <laughs> I hope I don't bore your listeners too much, but it's, it's really exciting. When, they, in, when, they, when your heart, when you start to exercise, um, our nervous system sends messages to the heart telling it to speed up and, and pump more blood because it's needed in the muscles. Mm-hmm. When the heart's transplanted, those nerves are cut. So uh, they don't get that immediate heart rate response that uh, that you and I would get when we start to run. It can take seven or eight minutes for their heart rates to increase. Wow. And, and even at that point, um, their heart rates certainly don't reach um, the, 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 the maximum heart rate that, that uh, a non-transplanted heart would reach. So, um, so, so very interesting that, um, you know, one of the, one of the gentlemen that, uh, I've had the, the pleasure of working with a heart transplant recipient, um, over the course of the, it was probably 20 years after his transplant when I met him, um, his nerves had actually grown back to his heart. So he had a, you would be a person who didn't know he had a heart transplant looking at his, uh, his heart rate during runs wouldn't know that he had a heart transplant. Whereas wow. That's not the case with most heart transplant individuals. So is that does that mean they have to be very careful if they are like a runner that they have to, you know, is is there some kind of something that restricts them or like prevents, you know, dangerous put them put it, going into dangerous situations or they just physically can't uh, can't do it? <laughs> uh, no, I, I, well, it's a bit of both. So um, if they, you know, I, I use the example of sprinting for the bus. If your bus is just uh, starting to pull away and you sprint to go and catch that bus, uh, your heart rate is going to increase quite quickly. Mm-hmm. And of course, that doesn't happen with the heart transplant recipients. So they physically can't get blood to their muscles okay. at the rate that it's needed. So they physically can't do it. And then as a result of uh, overexerting themselves, they, there is some risk of, of uh, I would guess, passing out or that kind of fainting or certainly lightheadedness of, of overdoing it. Okay. So once again, your body has its own safety mechanism to kind of 
literally prevent you from <laughs> doing anything <laughs> that will put you in serious danger. So that, that's yeah. interesting. And uh, so you've run marathons and Ironman yourself. Uh, what has your research shown you about endurance sports in general? Uh, wow, great question. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> my, my current, well, I guess my, uh, you know, my, my current uh, research has, majority of my research has been with, with the transplant recipients. But, uh, you know, just with, with the other studies that I've been involved with, just, uh, you know, what it, you know, there's, there, there appears to be, I, I guess there's, I've yet to see someone, uh, not improve through endurance training. You know, we, perhaps we do have a, a genetic ceiling that we'll reach that will, will cap us. But I, I, I would say for the most part, I've, I've yet to see that in any individuals huh. with, uh, with good training, everybody improves, if not a lot, you know, improves somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And um, so with going on your research, uh, you enjoy researching about new technologies and sports. Uh, can you give us some examples of what you have found with those new technologies? Oh, certainly. Yeah, I've had a, a couple opportunities uh, and not just in sport. Uh, in the in the institution I work at, we do a lot of applied research. So uh, recently we've uh, um, assessed the effectiveness of a uh, for um, individuals who uh, their occupation is ultrasound they they hold a transducer and and we uh, a device came out that was supposed that reduce the stress of uh of that's put on the wrist a lot of them get overuse injuries in their wrists and shoulders and necks so this we evaluated this device um but on on the sporting front uh I've had the opportunity to uh, uh, more, more, more most recently uh, kind of evaluate the technology of a, a mechanical spring that was inserted in the uh, midsole of a running shoe, and uh, yeah, so we assess that, see if uh, how that would improve the the economy of the individuals running. Okay, and what did you do? You want to go into that? Let's let's talk about that a little bit more and kind of tell us what you found with that, what the research involved, and just come some of the interesting things you want to share with us. Oh sure. Um, so I guess just a bit, a bit of background, uh, and, and I should say that uh, I should disclose that I have, I have no financial uh, incentive uh, from the shoe company. I made no money from them. They they did su supply me with the shoes to perform the research, but um, I, I was in uh, Boston, the Boston Marathon in uh, 2013, and uh, as luck would have it, uh, our the, the airline I flew with lost my bag and. I know that as a good runner, I should always put my shoes in my carry-on, but I didn't. And so <laughs> I, I, I ended up losing my shoes uh, the, a few days before the race. Um, and at the expo there, we were walking around, and I thought I, I'd best pick up a new pair of shoes in case my 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 suitcase doesn't turn up in time. Um, and walking through the expo, I came across an exhibit uh, of a shoe I had never heard of. And in speaking with the owner of the company, um, he had... Uh, explained that they put two small mechanical or steel springs in the in the front of the shoe and one in the heel of the shoe and that this would um, improve uh, well make it easier on the joints for running but also uh, he said it would make me a faster runner which you know every rider wants to hear <laughs> so I um, I, uh, I thought okay well this is really funny someone's put springs in a shoe I you know at the very least I have to buy a pair of these and see how they how they work was that the scientist in you kind of curious about that or <laughs> you think that was the runner uh that I, you know what I bet that's 50 50 <laughs> um, I, I just you know I when some of the some claims that are made by some companies I I always think oh I, I should test that out I, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you if that's the truth or not yeah, but okay. I ended up buying a pair, and as luck would have it, my shoes did turn up, so I, I I was able to run the marathon in my 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 usual running shoe. But when I got back to Edmonton, um, I run at lunch from work, and uh, I noticed my I, I was wearing the new, the new shoes um, uh, with the mechanical springs, and uh, I noticed that my running times were a little bit quicker. Uh, certainly not science; could be you know less time at the traffic light or or just the feel of the shoe itself. So uh, I. The scientist in me said, well, let's try something. Let's uh, hop on the treadmill. And I have a very, fairly well-equipped laboratory. Uh, so I was able to measure how much oxygen I was consuming while running in these shoes and compared it with how much oxygen I would consume in my uh, own shoes. And like a car, the less oxygen you need, the more economical you are. And it showed that I was using less oxygen in these uh, mechanical spring shoes. So I phoned up uh, the owner of the company. Uh, who had given me his card at the time, and and I said, hey, you know what I found is, you know, just on myself, I I seem to be running um 
f- faster uh, with, 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 with what I perceive to be the same effort. Um, you know, would you like to test this out? You want to send me some shoes and I can do a little research project here and, uh, and it won't cost you anything. I'll do it in my free time because I love science. Mm-hmm. So I, so he, he was quite, uh, quite positive. He said, absolutely. I'll send you up, uh, full sizes of males and females. And so, yeah, basically what I did was I, I, uh, I, I had some some experienced runners come in, have them run on the treadmill at seven miles an hour, and uh, five minutes in their own shoe, and five minutes in the, the Spira or the the mechanical spring shoe. Uh, and what I found overall was that the, the the mechanical spring actually the shoe with the mechanical spring actually was made the runners more efficient. They used less oxygen running in that shoe uh, on average than they did running in their own shoe. And did you find that, um, or did you, your experience plus their experience kind of see that um, they were, you know, do you feel more springy? Is it you're, you're kind of bouncing along or how, how does it feel different, like in that kind of shoe? Yeah, the, um, the difference was, it was significant, but it, it is very small. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, it'd be good. Not, yeah. If, if I, I guess um, the shoe feels different it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's returning a lot of energy back to you um it, it, it's a comfortable shoe mm-hmm. um it doesn't yeah and i think that's maybe one of the benefits is it, it just feels like a running shoe it doesn't yeah. there's a special feel to it so um, it doesn't change your running mechanics and that you know you you suddenly stride you your stride length is longer or you know it's not it's not gonna like any listeners uh that are thinking about uh the the shoe uh spira is the name of the brand um they're not going to you know come across and be like oh i don't want to try this it's going to completely mess up my running gait it's this is something is a minor difference that you wouldn't you know maybe maybe you wouldn't physically notice it in the way that you're running you just kind of it was only the curiosity in you that actually discovered that that's correct yes i i certainly didn't uh, and none of the subjects uh in the study uh, had commented that the the shoe uh, made their stride different or anything. It's it's very subtle if if there is any change and, and certainly unnoticeable. It just feels like a, a running shoe. It does feel it, it feels different, but it mm-hmm. certainly doesn't um, change your your running stride in any way. Yeah, and do you exclusively use Spira now, or do you you rotate with your other shoes, or have you? Uh, yeah, I, I pretty much, I pretty much just use the Spira now. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I find it comfortable and, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. kind of sold on it. <laughs> and we, uh, we actually, uh, Doug Curtis, we had him on the podcast, uh, a few months ago and I, I, uh, actually found out that he is, uh, one of the, he wears Spira in his marathons and, you know, he's been extremely successful, uh, 200 marathons under three hours and you know he's had a great deal of success in those shoes so um it is interesting to talk about and uh any of our listeners who do want to check out these shoes um you can go to runnersconnect.net forward slash rc58 and you will be able i'll put a link there to the shoes if you want to check them out in addition to uh ken's study that he did so um so yeah ken so was there anything else um, that you found interesting from that study? Any other like uh, unexpected um, results that you kind of didn't see when you did it yourself, but kind of had from your um, uh, participants? Uh, well, yes, per- personally, I guess uh, when I when I ran the study personally, and and I guess that kind of steered my 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 hypothesis and my research. I noticed a, a significant reduction in in my own heart rate as well. Um, but that didn't seem to, um, to correspond with all the subjects in the study. Some saw similar heart rates, some were, were lower heart rates, but, okay. uh, but didn't, didn't reach significance. And do you plan to study it any more in the future or have you kind of got everything you need for now? Uh, no, I, I sure would like to. I, I think, you know, in, if, uh, if any of your readers, uh, read the, read the study, which I would encourage them all to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I would, uh, one of the limitations was, um, you know, we we were, we compared the the mechanical spring technology to a standard running shoe, and the runners were allowed to uh, basically they all you know their shoes were all in newer condition. Um, nobody ran in really old shoes, so we we made the assumption that the the energy the, the EVA systems would all be about the same as a a traditional a traditionally cushioned shoe. 
so it would be nice to uh, you know make a more standardized comparison comparison of the Spira to say brand A rather than you know we had probably had five different brands of shoes uh, and you know I had seventeen subjects probably seventeen different models of shoes okay. uh, all compared against the Spira so to, and that's kind of um, you know it was as it was a an unfunded research project um, you know I, I kind of hope that. If not me, someone else will want to build on this study and say, well, let's see if it, uh, how it compares to, um, you know, another brand's uh, energy return system or, or, or something like. So I, I certainly have some ideas I would like to, uh, to, to move on with. And, yeah. and that would be one of them. Yeah. Okay. So if anyone does, uh, anyone listening out there has, you know, this has really piqued your interest and, uh, you check out the study, you think you, this is something, you know, you, uh, would like to be a part of, is there a best way that people can contact you to, uh, let you know about this or just say they would like to try it out or maybe they do try out a pair of Spira and want to, you know, let you know of their, their findings. What would be the best way to get you for that? Uh, absolutely. I, I think, uh, Twitter's probably the best way. Okay. If they want to reach me at Twitter, and it's uh, at Ken Reese, so at K E N R I E S S. Okay, great. All right. So, um, was there was that just your experience with those shoes? What kind of prompted you to look at running economy, or was it? Um, is there something else that kind of made that be something of interest to you? Uh, well, I've been. Um, I'm a. It, you know, um, I'm a. I'd like to think in the in the world of sport anyway. Is is a, I, I'm a bit of an early adopter. I, I just okay. love technology and I love uh, trying out new things. And so I went through the whole. Uh, you know, when the uh, when the minimal shoes came out, um, I uh, you know I bought a pair of those and would try those out, see how I liked them. So I guess what kind of steered it through the economy? I, I um, you had Dr. Lieberman on a, a, a little while back there, mm-hmm. and uh, he did a study on the. Um, on the the minimal shoes and the effect on running economy and that's what kind of guided this project as well was and and i pretty much used the same protocol that he used for his study uh, running on the treadmill at a standard rate for for five minutes so i I think you know as a scientist you know if we we break down um running into uh oxygen delivery oxygen extraction or let's call it energy uh, our heart's ability to pump the blood our muscles ability to use the blood the oxygen in the blood and then the economy is kind of the forgotten, um, uh, the for- forgotten part of the equation that we can, you know, improve our 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 speed or our, our our ability through improvement in economy. And that's one of the other things that kind of interests me. Hmm. And is there? Um, do you think this is something that's becoming more common? I mean, with uh, obviously with Born to Run, uh, Chris McDougall, who we did actually have on the podcast a few months ago. Um, I I'm guessing. There seems to be more and more of these uh, kind of research, research studies coming out about running economy and kind of realizing the importance of it. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. And 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 uh, that uh, you know, looking at um, you know, in the field I'm in, I'm, I'm always looking for improve uh, ways individuals improve their their VO2 max or the max amount of oxygen they can consume, um, either through uh, again delivery or or extraction. But uh, and it seems to me that um, you know uh, much of that much of those exercise studies have I won't say been exhausted, but there there's not a lot of new studies coming out, a lot of new uh, methods to improve VO2. So there seems to be a bit of a, a shift towards improvement in economy, certainly in the literature. Okay, good. And uh, just just out of curiosity for myself, uh, how good is your running economy? Have you uh, incorporated what you've learned kind of into your into your own running or if you were you always pretty good with your economy and how you efficient you are uh no you know what I've just <laughs> been working on my my I have a uh, I have two boys 16 mm-hmm. and 14 and my younger son joined a track club again I started running in my early 20s um and uh you know in the in the span of of, of a year and a half he now over the course of a mile runs, runs faster than I do, which, uh, <laughs> and I, and I watch him run and I, I just think, wow, like that is what running should look like. And, you know, you see a video of yourself running, <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and I think, okay, so since, uh, since actually, you know, having that, that, that epiphany of, of that's what good running form looks like, I'm going to now adopt that. I, I've, I've improved my running certainly. What changes I, I hasn't... have you made yourself? Uh, I'm looking at, uh, well, just increasing the, 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 the stride rate okay. and, uh, and, and a little more upright posture as well. 
Okay. Have I you the two things I was lacking? Yeah. Have you researched into stride rate? I mean, I'm guessing you you read up on it a lot, but have you had any studies, uh, or you've you know read in detail about any particular studies involving stride rate? No, no you know I haven't. But uh, but summertime in uh, summertime in in an academic's career is nice and slow, so I, I do plan <laughs> to catch up on that. <laughs> okay. And do you have any other uh, studies that you are planning for the future? Um, you know, that you would like, you obviously mentioned about Spira, but are there any other uh, research studies that you would intend to do in the next few years? Uh, I have none um, planned out entirely or, or, or specifically. Uh, we have, uh, I, I, uh, my 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 main job is at a uh, an institution called the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, and uh, one of the one of the one of the key um, I guess tenets of the of the institution is is applied research. So there there is uh, some good support there for uh, for looking at some some uh, some 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 research to be done in partnership with industry. So sometimes it's a matter of. Uh, I guess um, doing what you want to do, and sometimes it's a matter of uh, of, of doing what's available. So I'm okay. going to try and find a combination of the two. And, and yeah, yeah, great. And uh, you mentioned earlier that you have a lab, and your lab does uh, VO2 max testing, lactate, body composition. Um, what what can you kind of uh, give us some information on what you've learned from that? Anything any runners can listening can take from uh, what you found through the testing of uh, people in your lab. Uh, certainly, uh, again, um, I guess just with the, you know, everybody, I, I, I firmly believe that everybody has the bil- the ability to improve that for us to reach our, our true ceiling is, is, uh, it is probably pretty difficult. I think it's just a matter of getting over the, the moving from large improvements to smaller improvements. Um, other things I've learned, you know, with regards to running an economy, uh, you know, just um, and and now that I've taken a little more of an interest in in what good running form looks like, when I see people running on the treadmill, uh, for the most part, I deal with uh, healthy college age students, and uh, not not really any um, uh, necessarily any any uh, elite runners or anything. But uh, when I when I see you know the the average person running on a on a on a treadmill, average healthy person. Uh, could possibly have a, a fairly high VO2 max. Um, so high VO2 would be, you know, in the in the 60s, 70s. Uh, so I see in the 60s uh, quite frequently. Uh, and then when I see their their running form on the treadmill, I think, wow, if you could just, you know, improve that form a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, improve that economy, you would see some 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 great gains in your your performance. So you are really seeing, you know, the correlation between economy and, you know, people's VO2 max and what they can, yeah, like you said, perform better? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And then what about, uh, like, body composition? Have you have you found anything interesting about uh, different body compositions and how that affects VO2 max or how that affects your running economy? Uh, not, 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 uh, not research wise, but, but, but anecdotally, certainly, um, you know, generally, uh, it seems to be the, the, the less fat a runner carries, the, the easier it is for them to run. And it's basically like, you know, carrying a, a five pound knapsack, you know, mm-hmm. if you've got some extra fat on you, but you know, I, I'm always hesitant to mention anything about body composition. I, I certainly am not, um, uh, well versed enough about it to to you know incur to find out what the optimum body weight is and, yeah. and with um, you know concerns I would have with with eating disorders and such especially mm-hmm. in the elite athletes it's an area I'm not I'm not too too comfortable with oh no no that's okay I just I was just curious myself no 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 um and it, do you have any any other thoughts on what the future holds for you or anything else that you want to you know share with our listeners about um anything you've kind of learned over your career uh. I think uh, the 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 message I love the the beauty of being in the field that I'm involved with is uh, you know exercise is uh, exercise is is awesome. There's there's no for, you know for for the majority and I, and I even go past the majority, but I, I, I would even go out on a limb and say for everyone, um, exercise is is so important. And uh, you know working with the the, the transplant recipients. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with a, a breast cancer study as well. Uh, everyone improves with exercise and, uh, and the, and the benefits from improving your fitness level, uh, 
not just from a performance point of view, uh, but from uh, a health point of view, is uh, is is just so important. So to, just to, and and that's probably well, uh, I think where 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 some of my research will go as well is just uh, looking at the, you know, the the other benefits, so taking it from speed, uh, how fast we can run to, you know, how, how much did it lower my cholesterol or, uh, did it, uh, improve my, my, my blood sugar levels or did it reduce my blood pressure? Those are things that everyone can certainly see an improvement with, with exercise. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, that's what I've learned over the course of my, my, uh, my, uh, I guess career. And, but now that I've, you know, I've just recently got into the, the whole running shoe thing and the, the mechanics thing and the economy thing. And, and that's, uh, you know, it's uh, that dangerous, uh, cliche, the more, you know, the more, you know, you don't know. So I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to, uh, to, to, to pursue that a little further as well. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts like on that. why, uh, why it hasn't really caught on with, um, Spyro? Like why, why, you know, we haven't all heard of Spyro or if there's, um, anything, you know, our listeners can do that can help kind of other than obviously purchasing the shoes yeah. <laughs> to, um, to kind of, um, make people open their eyes a bit more. And like you said, you know, the more, you know, the more you want, like you want to know more. So, um, is there any other things you can think of that would help with that? Uh, well, I hope that, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think with the, uh, with, 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 with labs like mine, um, and with, with, uh, lab personnel that, that have an interest in, in these things that, uh, in, in, um, analyzing new technologies and, 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 uh, seeing if there is a, a relationship, uh, or, a, some sort of improvement that goes along with it. Uh, hopefully we'll see more of that kind of, uh, published literature. When I was doing some background research for my, um, for, for this study, um, you know, you, I kind of want to see what was done and, and no sense reinventing the wheel, but there isn't much peer review published literature on, um, a running shoe. So, uh, you know, you've got, um, again, Lieberman's group, uh, with the, uh, with the minimal shoes doing some research with the mm-hmm. minimal shoes. Um, and they were, they compared it, I, I believe it was to an ASICS, but, um, but, uh, to, but now with, um, you know, more labs doing more work. And I think hopefully, um, with, with consumers driving the demand, we'll start to see, well, I hope we'll see more research based on specific products and say, this product is good. This product is not good. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, uh, I hope that will kind of, you know, I think consumers need to be, um, need to read the literature as well. Yeah. And it, 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 you know, advertising is such a strong, such a strong, uh, motivator for purchasing and mm-hmm. uh i know i i certainly know nothing about um about shoe marketing but uh i i would assume that the marketing budgets for the shoe companies uh, mm-hmm. are, are quite a bit high, for the yeah. major shoe companies are, are quite a bit higher for that aspira so how do you you know hopefully the the, the science will 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 get well get the get the consumers a little more interested yeah in, in their options out there Definitely. And I think, you know, this could revolutionize the shoe industry if we, you know, really, if we get enough people kind of looking into this, because, you know, um, improving your running economy, uh, giving you, you said using less oxygen, I mean, that could, you know, make a huge difference in performance and someone who, you know, you, maybe you're um, 30 seconds away from a Boston qualifier, or, you know, you're, um, trying to run um your best time in well a 5k you know that, that few seconds could make all the difference so you know this is something that people are going to be interested in so you know if you do want to check out more definitely check out that study from ken which i will put on the show notes at runnersconnect.net forward slash rc58 and uh yeah you can learn more about um uh ken's study and uh, about spire issues and kind of get the word out there um so Ken, just to uh, finish up here, um, if I, I give all of my uh, guests uh, a question, which is um, if you could give one word to describe what you would like to become, accomplish or achieve this year, what would that be and why? One word? Yep. <laughs> one word to describe. Ooh. Faster. Faster? Is that, Faster. Is that in every aspect of your life? Uh, yeah. <laughs> or just yeah. Well, oh, you know what? Let me change it. Let me say economical. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and then I can transfer that to every every aspect of my life. 
That's good. Good. Just kind of like uh, making the most of things and really, you know, giving them the best you can. Yeah, exactly. And, okay. and you know, when you're doing something, um, you know, do it. Do it I, right. I, 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 I tend to, you know, I'm easily distracted. So <laughs> I, I tend to not be too, don't let my boss hear this, but I tend to be not too economical in my work sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure we're all guilty of that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, Ken, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. And it's been really interesting learning more about your studies and what you found. And uh, look, we will look forward to following on more. I know. Um, our listeners love to learn about the science behind things and especially things like this uh, where it's something you know unheard of but could change the entire shoe industry this is this has been interesting so great thanks for uh, taking the time to, to share with us today well I appreciate your interest in it thank you very much thank you and there you have it wasn't that interesting I thought that was crazy I can't believe after all this time there's a, a shoe that can actually make that much of a difference if you enjoyed the podcast today, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes at the show notes at runnersconnect.net forward slash RC58. There's a video demonstration of just how to do that. It would really help us rise up the rankings. And if you enjoyed it, it would really mean a lot to me. You can also email me whenever you like. My email is tina at runnersconnect.net. So if you have any suggestions, any thoughts on who you'd like to hear from, or just what you would like to see me improve on, that would be great if you could email me anytime. Looking forward to talking to you again soon. Have a great week of running.